park is a 46,000 square foot skate park in Garland, Texas. It's one of the largest skate parks in the United States and it's officially called the Rick Odin Skate Park. The park contains a little bit of everything except for a larger pool area which I'm not complaining about. It's designed for all ages and all wheels, inline skates, scooters, skateboards, bikes, all of it, all is welcome. There's awnings and trees for shade and there will be a lighting system to protect skateboarders from the summer. And I say will because the skate park is not technically open yet, but I, I am a skateboarder, so. Um... I thought this Garland skate park was actually open. And there's all these workers around me and no one's saying anything, so I think we're good. Spoiler alert, I actually ended up getting a full session in and the goal was to see if I could skate every single obstacle in the park. But I also had the anxiety of trying to do the tricks quick because I wasn't sure if one of the workers wouldn't want me there. Also, I'm not promoting that anyone go to the park just yet. I think it's going to open very soon because you can get a ticket, you can get arrested. Once I got to the park, I figured the best way to handle it was to skate one section at a time. I divided the skate park into four sections. There was the beginner area, with the smaller rails, ledges, stairs, etc. Then there was section number two, which was the bowl. I'm not the biggest fan. I wish I was better at transition, but that's just the way it is. And then there's section number three, which is the big hammer time section. It's the bigger version of the beginner area. There's the bigger stairs, the bigger rails, the bigger ledges. And then there is section number four. Section number four is the creative section. Uh, the kind of section that I usually enjoy the most. So let's compare and contrast the four sections, starting with the beginner section. I found a video that my friend Eric Coons actually made talking to someone who works at the Parks and Rec at the Garland Park. The skate park was originally approved in 2004 with a $1.1 million budget and they bounced around the ideas all the way up till 2017. That's 13 years of indecision. It was approved to be built on the property of an old armory. Don't even know what that is, but the mayor was not into the idea at all. He said that if they approved this concept and they started moving forward, that he would actually resign. And it was approved and he was true to his word. We do not have to put a skate park and a dog park precisely right here. More kids own skateboards now than baseball gloves. That's pretty amazing. He thought it cost too much. He said it was a rushed idea, even though it took 13 years to get there. There's a lot more information about this that I'll, I'll link Eric Kuhn's channel down below because he makes really good Dallas content. And this is, this is a lot of what he said in this video. In this video, they projected that they would be done with the skate park around t July, 2022. Not quite finished yet, but pretty damn close. There's also a baseball field, a basketball court, a uh, uh, dog park, trails. It's gonna be a massive project, the Rick Owens Park, and apparently it's gonna cost around $15 million. All right, let's be honest. I wasn't really gonna get into the bowl section. I was very short on time. I'm not super into transition, so I will make a trip back once the park is open so that there's less anxiety and I'll skate the bowl. But section number two, let's just avoid that altogether. But section number three, the big section. <laughs> A 
Again, my focus was to try to hit all of the obstacles not doing the best tricks. And I know that sounds like an excuse, and it totally is, but my anxiety was still a little, I was a little unsettled. I wasn't sure if there was gonna be, gonna be cops that came or security or people to stop me. So I still was, I was rushing. It's just crazy because there's a lot of skate parks where you can count the number of obstacles on your hands. It's like, oh, maybe there's five, maybe there's eight obstacles, but this skate park, it had a- uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, and I'm just gonna say 45, 46 for the rest of the entire bowl. 47, the rail, 48, 49, 50, 51, the wall right in the back, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, uh, and 66. 66 obstacles, and that's not including the different variations of tricks that you can do on each obstacle or how you can you know, string them together. That's just like the obstacle and what it's designed for. But we only have one section left, the creative section. So let's get into it. <laughs> every single obstacle, but I hit a lot and I can actually rank the uh, sections in order from my favorite to the least. My favorite is the creative section. I think I knew that was gonna happen. My second favorite is actually the big section. I loved how the rails felt and the stairs. And if I had more time, I would definitely be into trying to do more tricks down them. And then I like the beginner section. It was, it was weird because beginners can actually skate pretty much all over the park. Same with advanced skaters. There's things in the beginner section that are difficult and things in the advanced sections that are a little easier. But then of course, for me, the section that I enjoyed the least was the bowl section. But once I get good at skating bowls one day in my life, I hope uh, it'll you know it'll move on up. And I feel like it, it's for people who love bowls, it's, it's probably amazing. So what would I rate this skate park overall? 10 out of 10. Straight up, this is one of the best skate parks I've ever been to, if not the best. And in the DFW area, I do think it is the best skate park. You can just grow from like flat rail to a tiny rail to a slightly bigger rail. Like they have so many obstacles in between to practice and train. So if you're trying to skate stairs, there's like a curb, two, three, four, five. You can just move on up slowly in that progression. It's just wonderful. It feels like, it feels like a free Woodward. Texas is building some of the biggest and best skate parks in the country right now and consistently. And that's one of the major reasons why I actually live here now. I will always visit LA, New York City, other countries as well but my homestay is here because of the fact that you can skate all year because the skate scene is super kind and polite and awesome and genuinely the city cares. I don't know why I'm saying it genuinely so much. They care about skateboarding a lot. So we have so much to skate every day. Again, you're smart. If you go there, there are signs that say not to enter, not to skate. So you can get a ticket, you can get in trouble. And if that's something you're willing to do, then you know who am I to stop you? But just saying that, uh, just putting out the warning for those out there 
you're smart. You don't need me to tell you anything. Every Tuesday and Thursday, there are new videos on this channel, so be sure to subscribe and tune in for the new content, all the skateboarding adventures. You can check out progressdaily.com if you want to check out our flat rails that we're actually selling, or just sign up for our email campaign if you want to receive weekly letters from me. Also, get notification before the drops actually happen because our last drop sold out in like a few hours, and a lot of people were kind of angry at me, but if you're on the email list, you will know before anyone else. So uh, tune in for that. Thanks so much for being here, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's it. Take care. Progress daily and keep killing it.